Good afternoon, class. My name is Mr. Gomez, uh, aka San Dino Gomez, and I'm a teacher candidate in um, the National University Sanford's uh, School of Education's uh, teacher credential and master's program. Um, this is my third entry into my digital showcase of reviewing the concepts and TPEs that I've learned from the class uh, ITL 606 um, Learners and Learning Part 2. Just want to point out that it's Pride Month, uh, month of June, so we just uh, celebrated our festival here in Santa Cruz and, you know, thought I'd wear the appropriate tie today. Um, so we're just going to go through a really quick review of the four weeks and the things we learned each week, kind of helping me to become a more inspired and professional educator, learn a little bit more about the techniques uh, and methodologies that I hope to use inside my classroom, as well as um, other fun things as we go. Um, week one really focused on um, introducing how humans learn, considering what the word learn means and different styles of learning, and to begin to think of learning from the perspective of a teacher. Uh, me, of course, being a future teacher, I need to think about like what is it that helps people learn, what can I do to help them learn, and so this week kind of focused on those things. We looked at a variety of learning theories and instructional approaches to meet the unique needs of learners. Um, these focused on TPEs, uh, those are the teacher professional expectations, um, I'm sorry, teacher performance expectations for the state of California, and um, this week's kind of learning outcomes focused on 2.2, 4.1, 4.2. I'm going to put a link in the description to the um, document that describes the whole TPE, so if you'd like to learn more about the uh, particulars of the TPEs that I'm uh, mentioning, because I'm not going to review them like I did last month, um, <clears throat> there's a great document that I'll put in the description below, so just use that. Uh, ba -da -ba -bum. We also compared the knowledge um, of typical and atypical child and adolescent development in the identification of appropriate instructional services. Um, those focused on TPEs 1.4, 3.6, and 4.2. Um, finally, we analyzed data from a variety of assessments and data sources about each student's these included IEPs, IFSPs, ITPs, and 504. And we learned about their implications for uh, creating learning objectives and plans for our students, uh, monitoring student progress, and differ differentiating, as well as making accommodations for particular students, and adapting our learning, um, well, our, our lesson plan, our learning plans for the students. And we also learned how to identify strategies and create environmental supports that are appropriate to each student's individual success. Um, this incorporated TPEs uh, 1.5, 5.1, 5.6, 5.7, and 5.8, almost the whole, whole round there. Um, week two, we also focused on how humans learn. We learned how we can design uh, learning environments intentionally to influence different parts of the brain, i.e. help students learn. Um, and we also uh, continued an assignment that we began the first week called Mr. Jones and Ray, a case study. Um, this looked at um, Mr. Jones, who was a uh, middle school algebra teacher and kind of um, seven students that he had in his class that he had sort of uh, concerns about or that were not succeeding as well as they could have been under the current instruction methodologies and lessons plans that uh, Mr. Jones was using. So it was kind of like a cry for help for Mr. Jones to think, to ask, to challenge us as teacher candidates to think about what uh, each student needed and how Mr. Jones could be a more effective teacher for them. So we actually formed groups at the, during the first week and we worked uh, in our groups all four weeks on the case study of Mr. Jones and Ray, uh, as well as looking at several other students within the class of Mr. Jones. So that was um, really kind of the focus of week two there. We um, considered a variety of learning theories and instructional approaches to meet the unique needs of learners again um, these are TPEs 2.2, 4.1, 4.2, and again continued to compare knowledge of typical and atypical child and adolescent development in the identification of appropriate instructional services. So really focusing a lot, um, again, on what we did the first week. These were TPE 1.4, 3.6, and 4.2s as well. Um, week three, we shifted uh, gears a little bit and we looked into different theories of classroom management and decisions that we can make as teachers and how they'll impact classroom uh, management. We uh, had a classroom observation assignment this week. Uh, mine was particularly amazing. I went and observed an uh, individual 
friend of mine, in fact, by the name of Miss Judith Mayer, a.k.a. Miss Mayer. And she is a social studies teacher at Harbor High School and just a really um, brilliant individual, a great teacher. She has almost a decade of experience. And watching her in her classroom was really helpful for me because I think um, I'm going to aspire to use a lot of the same classroom management techniques that she uh, uses in her class, including group works, including kind of uh, reinforcers of good behaviors, not necessarily um, punishing bad behavior, but more like uh, ignoring it and trying to deal with it outside of the context of the whole class. So I thought Ms. Mayer's um, way of dealing with disruptions was, was really insightful and really awesome, as well as her transitions during um, class between activities were just really really spot on, uh, almost no wasted time. The students were on task the entire uh, time. And then I conducted a really great interview with her afterwards that I thought um, helped me understand better uh, a lot of the thinking behind what she does. So I really enjoyed that assignment quite a bit. Um, and then of course we continued the Mr. Jones assignment uh, in light of new data, in light of looking at a lot of uh, new information that was introduced to us this week to help us make better decisions about what the students needed or um, different techniques that Mr. Jones could use to help them. Um, we focused on a whole bunch of classroom learning outcomes this week. Uh, we compared a variety of learning theories and instructional approaches, met uh, TPE 2.2, 4.1, 4.2, we did the Knowledge of a Typical and Atypical Child and Adolescent Development again, TPEs 1.4, 3.6, 4.2. We compared the purposes, characteristics, and appropriate use and misuse of a wide range of assessment practices um, like formal and informal, formative and summative, um, progress monitoring, and multi-tiered systems of support. A lot of things we learned about in previous classes we kind of applied to this class. Um, we analyzed data from a variety of assessments and data sources. Um, including that whole alphabet soup I mentioned earlier, IEPs, IFSPs, ITPs, and 504s. Um, we learned about the implications for learning objectives and plans and how we can use them to monitor student progress um, and basically help our students succeed, uh, kind of adjusting plans accordingly to what, uh, what we learned. Basically take information that we get through assessment or other means and apply it to instructional uh, methodologies. Um, this focused on TPE 1.5, 5.1, 5.6, 5.7, and 5.8. Um, we identified and applied effective strategies for creating learning environments that ensure students and their families are treated fairly and equally, and that we address issues of intolerance and harassment, i.e. racism, uh, bullying, sexism, homophobia, any kind of other um, isms or schisms between students and how we can create a more complete and uh, kind of intact educational community. And then finally, uh, week four, we did a um, kind of wrap up. The, the big uh, project in week four was our signature assignment, which was taking everything we'd worked on, everything we learned in the Mr. Jones and Ray's case studies, uh, we worked in our groups and we kind of created um, uh, strengths, needs, interests, and um, wants charts for um, the individual students in Mr. Jones' classes. And we kind of uh, looked at what, based on those charts, what are some of the things that we could do or Mr. Jones could do for the students that would help them um, succeed within the class, the algebra class that he was teaching. So, um, and then we also reflected a lot on sort of what we've learned so far, how we've felt about the learning, um, did some great discussion posts all throughout the four weeks where we sort of talked uh, amongst ourselves as, as the students online about the different things we learned or um, the kind of thoughts we had about what we were learning. So kind of wrapped all that up uh, this week, week four. We um, really looked, again, at a lot of the same TPEs that I'd been talking about uh, previously. We compared a variety of learning theories and instructional approaches to meet the unique needs of learners, like working as individuals in small groups or as the whole class. Uh, this focused on TPE 2.2, 4.1, and 4.2. We compared knowledge of typical and atypical adolescent development in the identification of appropriate instructional services, um, including methodology, strategies, resources, and using technology to support a wide range of learners and ensure equitable access to the curriculum, i.e. making sure 
that students were able to understand and participate in what it was that we were teaching. Um, we worked on different concepts of universal design and learning and applying those concepts to the Mr. Jones and Ray case study. So kind of encourage Mr. Jones to think about how universal design and learning could be used to help uh, many of his students that were struggling. We did the compare knowledge and typical and atypical adolescent behavior again, TPEs 1.4, 3.6, 4.2. We did the alphabet soup again. We analyzed data from a variety of assessments and data sources, um, used them to create uh, individual plans and modify instruction for our various students. This was TPE 1.5, 5.1, 5.6, 5.7, 5.8. <gasps> and finally, um, the last learning outcome we had in this uh, week was to identify, apply effective strategies for creating learning environments that ensure students and their families are treated respectfully um, and that it addresses issues of intolerance and harassment, i.e. the same thing we did last week, but really looking at how we as educators can ensure that students feel safe, they feel welcomed, that they have sort of a Maslow's hierarchy of needs, at least the ones that we're able to provide as teachers, provided for them as they step into our educational spaces. So we wanna really make sure that the students feel uh, supported in who they are and um, kind of valued for who they are. One of the things that Ms. Mayer told me inside of our interview after class was that she saw the diversity of students um, in her class as a real asset often. In teaching social studies, there's a lot of times when you might learn about a particular group or uh, religion or ethnicity's experiences. And so being able to draw on individual student experiences within those, um, well, that's my son just woke up. <laughs> I'll try and wrap this up quick. Um, working um, to really include those experiences of those uh, individuals into the classroom instruction I thought one of the most powerful things that I saw her do as they were studying in the, the day that I observed, they were looking, uh, reviewing previous genocides they had studied and they started to look at the Holocaust from World War II. And so Miss um, Mayer is actually a survivor, or I shouldn't say a survivor, she's a second generation survivor of the Holocaust. And she did an amazing project um, through the film Schindler's List and the Steven Spielberg Foundation back when she was a teenager to interview Holocaust survivors uh, learn about their stories, to document them, and then, then to um, kind of share them in a big old uh, project. And as a grand finale of the project, they actually went to Europe and visited many of the camps that were featured in the film. And so Ms. Mayer actually brought in a photo album and talked about her experience as a second generation survivor who has studied extensively and learned about these topics. And you could just tell that the students were incredibly uh, motivated. Um, they were you know, just wrapped with attention, the sharing of a personal uh, side of the kind of educational topic of the day really made an impact on them, I could tell just right away. And I think, um, you know, when Miss Mayer talked later on about how she would, you know, try and when appropriate and when the student felt comfortable, ask them to share about who they were, what they'd experienced and how it related to the lesson of the day. I just thought that was like brilliant. And I think it's the kind of thing that connects students with the learning process. So it's definitely something that I hope to do as I become a professional inspired educator in the state of California. There you go. That was ITL 606. Again, my name is Mr. Gomez. It's been a pleasure to uh, take this class and to learn more about what it is, uh, how we do education here in the state of California. Cheers, y'all. Have a great day.